Um, just for a little bit of background. Historically, since the early 90s, um, the city has provided the police department with two police cars every year. Um, that without that has happened without fail uh, up until the last administration where uh, two, two fiscal years running now, we have not been given police cars. So um, technically, we are we are down for police cars. Um, this fiscal year, if for some reason we don't get police cars by July 1, we will be down six police cars in a fleet of 16 vehicles. Um, along, along with that is the fact that we alternate every other year between two marked vehicles and one, un and then the next year is one unmarked and one marked. The reason for that is we have six unmarked police vehicles and 10 marked police vehicles. The six unmarked police vehicles are for our detective bureau, which is two, and then the admin staff for four vehicles. Of the two years that we missed, one year was a, um, a marked unmarked year, and this year would be a marked unmarked year. So specifically, we are down two unmarked vehicles and what will be potentially four marked vehicles. Um, right now, our, our concern is our unmarked fleet. Um, we have a take-home lieutenant's car that has 110,000 miles on it and shouldn't even be on the road. And we have a detective vehicle, of which they have two, that is down due to um, about $5,600 in repairs that it needs. The car just is not worth putting that kind of money into. So the way it works is that the unmarked vehicle historically has gone to the chief of police and then all the vehicles are passed down the line. So this year we are asking for one unmarked and one marked vehicle. Um, right now, I believe you have in your packet a list of the vehicles we do currently have on the road. And you will see of those vehicles, which includes marked vehicles, unmarked vehicles, and two auxiliary police vehicles, five of those vehicles are out of service. Um, one will be back in service shortly, we hope. It's an, it's an extended warranty repair. And one is probably at least a month out that was involved in a motor vehicle accident. Once those two marked vehicles are back, our marked fleet is okay for now. The danger of not replacing the unmarked vehicles is that, first of all, we have four detectives that ride together in one vehicle. It's, it's if one detective takes that vehicle to a call, the other detectives have no way of getting anywhere unless there's a marked vehicle available for them to take, which quite often there is not. Um, and then the other vehicle, the lieutenant's vehicle, the lieutenant is a union member. If his vehicle is sidelined, which I'm getting to the point, I'm going to have no choice. We don't have a vehicle to give him. He then has a potential labor action because we're taking away a benefit. So that is why that unmarked vehicle, this cycle is crucial. Um, I can answer any other questions or concerns you have, hopefully, um, but that's kind of it in a nutshell. How much mileage is generally put on annually per vehicle? Um, our frontline vehicles um, typically put on about, if I had to guess, about 50 to 70,000 miles a year, our frontline patrol vehicles. And then what is the like mileage lifespan of a patrol vehicle or, or any of those? So kind of the rule of thumb in policing is that for a frontline patrol vehicle, you do not want to go past 85,000 miles. Once, once the vehicle starts approaching 100,000 miles, it really is not safe to get involved in pursuits, things like that, due to multi, a multitude of reasons. But, you know, um, mainly it's, it's mechanical. Even if, the, even if the vehicle appears mechanically sound at 100,000 miles, it just it's not really rated to be a frontline police vehicle. And it's fifty to sixty thousand a year. Yes, so we're, so we're like a year and a half in we're, the lifespan. We're, we're getting approximately two to two and a half years out of the vehicles, which is why we're swapping. We're pushing them down the line so quickly. Yes. And how many is it sixteen? Would sixteen be? like the ideal number, how many How many do we need to have in the city at any particular time to be fully? 
stocked? Well, I mean, there, there's there's two. I mean, if you're talking marked vehicles, for instance, on a full shift, we typically field five vehicles, four or five vehicles on the road at any given time. Um, marked vehicles, marked frontline patrol vehicles. Um, but there there is no real number, you know, other than the fact that, for instance, if you like years ago um, when we had four police vehicles, three police vehicles, what happens is, is they never stop running and you don't, you, you'll, you'll be lucky to keep them for two years before they break down. So we built the fleet to a point where we can rotate the vehicles at a reasonable rate and keep vehicle repair costs down, which is why luckily we've never had to ask for more money in our vehicle repair line because of the fact that we try to keep the cars under warranty. Once they're out of warranty, you know, we own everything for the repairs, so it becomes extremely expensive. So the 16, the number of it, um, where do you come up with it? Is that like average for this size city? I, I understand what you just said. Right. But no, I don't I don't know that there's there's a formula or or an average. It it just it's where it's where we are right now to really make the most fiscal uh, sense because of the fact if if you if you decrease the fleet, um, those cars will never stop running and, and they just you, you know you, you'll be in the same position you're in. So no, there is there is no formula and no set number. And you said there's about six that's usually on the road at all times. Five or six, yes. And on the unmarked, how many? Um, you said it's a benefit. For the lieutenant, how yes. many of them are benefits? Um, is it just the, him? The or? two lieutenants are in the union. The deputy chief and myself are not. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, it's my turn. So, uh, so chief, I, you know, I kind of know the the background of the, the police department. So, the four to five uh, vehicles per shift run. Yes. Right. So, uh, so at, at one given time, so you got car one, two, three, and four, and you might use two, six, and seven, or eight, whatever the, on the mileage. So it depends on when you rotate the cars there. So there's always four or five on the road, plus the detective car and the supervisor's car and everything. Uh, <clears throat> so, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go down this road. Uh, you know, I was on the job for 30 years, and like the chief said, we used to have four cars back in the day, and it was tough, you know. Um, and, you know, and I retired in 2008. So policing is different from when I started to where it is now. I mean, the, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta fund the police department somehow. We gotta fund the uh, the police vehicles there. Uh, I know uh, Karen, one of the persons in the public portion, talked about uh, the you know you got to be uh, restraints on these ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I know usually this goes before the capital planning committee, and we haven't had a meeting here in years. So I don't know where uh, we talked to the mayor, and the mayor is going to try to get a meeting up, you know, pretty close to, uh, yeah. so, so we yeah. could uh, see. There's a list. So who knows where those monies are? You know, monies are supposed to have been appropriate over the last several years, and we don't know. You know, this is the new administration coming coming in. So uh, we, we want to definitely, you know, cooperate with our police department. And, of course, my personal privilege that I, I worked there for 30 years. So anything that we could do to uh, to help the chief with this uh, with this request, you know, I think that we should we should do our best. With that said, I think we should look at the our, our capital planning to see where where we stand. If there's any funds in our capital planning, uh, to see if we could get the money out of there quicker than we can the opera funds. So, my proposal would be to. Uh, uh, investigate the ARPA funds to see if there's money in there right now that we could take out to see if, so the chief could buy his two police cars. And we would know an answer within another week or within the next month. 
by our next meeting, I would I would assume, right? Yeah. Uh, so this way we, we give the chief an answer if we're gonna if there's any capital planning money in there or we use the ARPA money to uh, give them uh, the the benefit of running a police department 24 hours a day. So are you, that, are you, are, no, sorry, go ahead. So, Coach. Chief, would you, I mean, before I do make this motion, do you think we're trying to get you the money? Right. I'm trying to get you the money. I'm sure my the fellow committees are trying to get you the money too. But uh, the quickest way, we got to see if there's money, other monies available before we, we expend the ARPA funds. So, if there's money in the capital planning, uh, we, we'll look at that. Yeah. And we'll, we'll see how much is in there. And we could give you give you an and I'll, I'll speak for the chairman. This is my own my own self speaking. Firstly, that we could give you an answer within the next within a month, or, or probably less, less 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 than a month, maybe two weeks, sure. three weeks. Sure, we, we could give you an answer. I know the mayor has told us that he was going to start up the the capital planning commission again, and, and see where uh, there's funds somewhere. In our budget, we just gotta gotta locate them. So, so hopefully that you agree with my little talk here. And if you disagree, you know. I, I do not. That is fine. Um, listen, we've waited this long, and another another few weeks, another month isn't isn't going to make or break us. So, um, we, we are doing what we can with what we have, and we will continue to do so. So, and do you have your the your requests for um, the Capital Planning Commission for the, you know, I, I know you said these two are for, um, you know, up through the end of this fiscal year. So I'm assuming before the end of 2024, you would be requesting another two. Uh, so I, I did submit a capital request to the chief of staff and okay. um, it was for four police cars. For four? Yes. So. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's helpful to know yeah. too, so we can get a full picture of what is being requested and to um, this was um, moved to the Capital Planning Commission. And I do think, you know, it's high time that we have a meeting and we are thankful that Mayor DiMartino is putting that together. Um, then we'll get you your vehicles. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much for your so, time. George, did you want to make a motion? But let me go ahead, Mayor. So we'll, we'll start on Monday uh, contacting all the people that are on capital plan and see if we can pick a date within the next couple of weeks to get together and, and get this ball rolling. So I just wanted to let you know, the, the committee now and chief. All great. right. All right. Thank that you. That sounds great. Thank you, Mayor. And I, um, if I may, to, um, I would urge the whole administration and the, the mayor and the board, and I know he's committed to it, but just to go a little, one more step further than that, respectfully, would just ask that there be a meeting, but also that you set a regular meeting schedule so that that there is a sense of regular uh, planning the schedule. So not trying to get a date, but to have a schedule. Um, I know the mayor's committed to that, but you know, I would I would urge that to make sure that because it's long overdue, um, this process of uh, leveling out the payments for capital, poli both police and fire, we spent many time, many many fiscal years to get to a situation where it would be a level payment because that, that's what you really want. You don't want this big fluctuation. You want it to be uh, <clears throat> level payments so that we can maintain and not throw good money after bad. So uh, kudos for that. Uh, but, and then also just to update you, it was said, but I just want to, so that for the benefit of the committee, uh, the chief of staff did request from all departments to update their capital requests so it's going to be compiled so that when the capital planning meets that'll it, for your you can analyze it here on this committee as finance committee but also for the capital planning commission to be able to have that at their first meeting so that we can kind of hasten the process because um a total disservice was done to our 
public safety and to actually each and every department in the city for the lack of capital planning. It's just set the city back further financially than what was reported this way, this week as well, just adding to the crisis situation. So. And I think, um, you know, we are, you know, what we would like is a comprehensive list of, you know, all the, the requests from all the departments so we can see them, get them into a prioritization, see, you know, what is ARPA eligible? What can we use the capital funds for? What do we need to go out and get grant funding for? Um, and, you know, and but really have a process with which to be able to give out these um, much needed funds and, you know, then get to a point where we can maintain what we need to maintain um, and, you know, not wait until stuff is, you know, broken down or or gone before we start talking about um, our needs. So, uh, so my so the capital mayor, you could probably so the, the capital plan that you can we're going to start real quick with the next couple of weeks. So this is going to be for this fiscal year, correct? The till June thirtieth, right? Yeah. I mean, if yeah. June, through June thirtieth, and and, and then so know, so the new capital plan would be July to you know to next year, right? So, so chief, the, my recommendation, you don't have to listen to me, is you put it, you put in for what you need now, and then in July, capital planning, put it put in again. Is that that money? Because the money doesn't carry over, right? Mark, maybe you could. Uh, because of the timing of right. it, I I said everybody was just asked for what they okay. needed, like you know, so the, so now and whatever if you need so to this, advise, but it's basically taking into account all of that stuff. Right. This is a different. This is kind of yeah, a rotating a thing. Yeah. So it's it's really, really up until <laughs> recently, it's been a it's been a constant. It's yes. been a um a level payment, uh, twenty years, I mean, at least. Yeah. You know, so that really should be kind of factored in. There's some of those line items that are in there, but they were they were not allowed to spend it. Right. Uh, I mean, okay. you know, we'll, yeah. try, we'll try to move in a forward direction, but to your point. And I think just one point, you know, even if we know, you know, items that may be requested in the, next fiscal year just you know for informational sake will be i think helpful for us helpful for the tax board to have an idea of what may be requested in you know the, the next fiscal year because you know they're going to be passing a budget um you know before some of these requests come in 